Guys, welcome back to the vlog. Um, thanks for joining again. And as promised, we're back talking about denim. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about this pair of LVC, that's Levi's Vintage Clothing, 1890 501s. Right, so yeah, just basically in a nutshell, Levi's Vintage Clothing is kind of the, well, it's in the name, it's the vintage part, the heritage part of Levi Strauss and Co. And they go back into their archive and they create jeans from the brand's history. So, I mean, the Levi's brand, it's been around for 140 years or, or more, actually. I don't know, I can't do math that fast. But anyway, it's been around for a good long time. And in that time, I mean, they were the ones that, they invented the blue jean, right? So in that time, there've, there's been an evolution in the, the garment that we, we associate as the, the blue jean. They look back in their archive and they make versions of each step in the evolution. I mean, it's probably much, much more gradual when you're on the factory floor looking at it. But there were certain things that just was like, okay, this marks a, a step towards the garment that we know today as the 501 jean. And this was, it wasn't the first, but it was the first one to actually have the 501 lot number on it. That to me just makes it a very, very interesting piece of denim history. And I'm looking forward to, to wearing it, to breaking it in, to, to seeing how it evolves, because it's quite different from other jeans that I've worn before. Okay, so what makes this an 1890 model? Uh, luckily, um, they, they provide like a little letter for, for the owner uh, explaining a few things. So I'll just take you through that quickly. To the owner of this 501 jean. <coughs> I'm not sick, I'm really not. I just need to dust more probably. Anyway, while Levi Strauss and Jacob David Davis invented the blue jean in 1873, 1890 was the first year that the 501 lot number was adopted. Levi Strauss and Co.'s patent for riveted clothing expired that same year, meaning that other companies could now also use rivets on clothing. To answer the coming competition, Levi Strauss and Co. printed the inside pocket bag with information about the strength and originality of the XX overalls. 1890 was the year that the 501 number was first assigned to the famous pants, likely done because the company no longer had exclusive patent and also because it had a good size line of clothing by this time. It was easier for the retailers to order their product by number rather than a simple description as had been done in the past. Any product made with the highest quality materials was given the lot number beginning with 5, so 501 for the overalls, 506 for the jacket, etc. Made with 9 ounce double X denim from, I don't know how to pronounce this really, Amoskeg? Amoskeg Manufacturing Company. If anybody knows how to pronounce that, let me know. Um, anyway, made from blah blah blah, made from XX Niners denim from the Amoskeg Manufacturing Company. The 501 pant was at the head of the class. Now, these are the details that kind of they make it the 1890 version. Um, nine ounce plain salvage denim, so the the red line wasn't in the salvage ID yet. Um, one back pocket with exposed rivets, cinch, suspender buttons, the first two horse leather patch, a crotch rivet, single needle arcuate, and pocket bag print. Now they just say, enjoy these jeans, every garment guaranteed. That's nice of them. You also get like a little, like, get the right fit guide and something about the cone denim loom state fabric. You know what, I'm going to go on to these another time because, yeah, I'm going to shrink them down in the next vlog and that's more relevant to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very curious how, how these are going to fit, how they're going to fade. I'm curious how they're going to fix. I'm going to do a shrink on them. I'm going to do that in the next one. And I'll be for sure measuring up and seeing how much I actually lose in the length. That's the only thing I'm slightly worried about. The waist, not at all. I'm pretty sure that's going to stretch out. I might do the boiling water trick on the leather patch just to make it look like a little bit less plasticky. I'm going to take care of the back rivets. You'll see how I'm going to do that as well. I did that in another pair. 
This is what I'm not too sure about. And maybe you guys can let me know what you think. When they were transitioning over from having a singe to having belt loops, there was a pair sometime, it wasn't the 1930, I think the 1933 or the 1937, there, there was a pair of jeans where it had the belt loops and the cinch in the back because more people were wearing belts at the time. And when you were buying your jeans, they'd have a big old pair of scissors and they'd just chop off the cinch at the back. And so you saw a lot of pairs, like vintage pairs from back in the day, that just had like, just these chopped off, like right here. I might... Uh, I'm gonna see how these are gonna I'm gonna see how they're gonna wear day to day because a lot of times like I do wear them a little bit lower in the waist than they're meant to be and this just sits right on your tailbone is very uncomfortable so that's about it that's that's what makes this pair of 501s the 1890 501s that's the the main features of them that um, is that the first step in the evolution of the 501 gene I guess um, maybe down the line if I can get hold of it, I will do videos on each and every evolution in the step. If you're listening Levi's Vintage Clothing, if I could borrow a pair, I promise I'll return them. Um, I won't shrink them down or anything, it'll just be for the features. But that could be a cool one. I'll have to see what I can do about that. Anyway. <laughs> right guys, that's it for today. How long have we been going on for? 16 minutes. Shit. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to cut that down a little bit. So guys, um, yeah, I hope you're all very, very well. I hope you're not going too stir crazy in quarantine. I hope none of you are trying to cut your own hair. I've seen some disasters on Instagram about that. And yeah. Okay, this is what I kept forgetting the last few times. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And um, we've got an Instagram channel. I'm gonna put that in a link below because it's not actually called Rope Dye anymore. I'm going to explain that in another another vlog as well and okay that's it for now just please take care of yourself uh, any questions any comments just put them down below and i'm going to see you in the next vlog where we're going to be shrinking these down